Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, last year, this time, we were just starting lockdown. So I think I used to greet you in the daily devotionals by, good morning, this is day three. Okay, and I think now it's day 368 of lockdown. Who would have believed? But more important than that, this is the Passion Week, the week that we are building up towards the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ on, on uh, this Easter weekend that's coming. And today being Tuesday, I want to read for you what happened in the week of Christ uh, on this Tuesday morning uh, that we are in now today, on this Tuesday. It says uh, in Matthew 21, it's recorded for us from verse 18, what uh, began to happen on that Thursday morning. And I just want to pick up the first event that is recorded for us on this Tuesday morning of uh, this the Passion Week. Uh, in verse 18, it says, Now in the morning, when he returned to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there be ever, shall there ever be any fruit from you. And all at once the fig tree withered. And um, we know, and I think you understand, that this fig tree represents Israel and uh, the law. And uh, Jesus was uh, obviously in this time beginning to uh, really experience more and more conflict with the Jewish religious leaders. And uh, he was having some very difficult discussions. Actually, this event of the fig tree is sandwiched in between two difficult conversations that he had with the religious leaders. Um, and obviously, as things were building to a head to the point where they were going to arrest him, the day before they actually tried to arrest him already. Uh, and as we know, uh, later that week by Thursday, they will actually get to arrest him. Um, and so Jesus was experiencing very really the fact that there were no good fruit coming from the law and from the Israelites uh, that believed in the law and that lived by the law. Uh, and so therefore, when he saw this fig tree, which represented Israel and the law that had no fruit, there was no good fruit. There was no fruit that could sustain him uh, on that tree any longer, he cursed the tree and to say that nev no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And he was declaring in that sense that this was the end of the time of the law, of the dispensation of the law, that the, the law is coming to an end. The old covenant is coming to an end and that a new covenant is about to be established and that that new covenant will produce fruit that the frustration he had with the fig tree was that it couldn't always produce fruit. And uh, so it is with the law, that it couldn't produce fruit any longer. And But the new covenant will produce fruit uh, in the lives of those that believe it and in the lives of those that have faith in what is going to happen on the cross and the resurrection of Christ, there will be fruit that will be produced for the kingdom. Um and uh, so the, the, this event carries on where the disciples in verse 20, seeing this, marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither at once? Because it was immediately that the Lord said, you know, he, it's like, remember, Jesus is the giver of life. He is the creator. Uh, it's by him that we live and move and have our being. So when he curses something, withdraws the right of life or the power of life from that thing, it immediately dies. It cannot exist without the 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 sustaining power of Christ. Uh, and Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, see, it shall happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. And so what Jesus is saying to them, he's saying, if you have faith um, and do not doubt, and but it's not just faith it's faith in the right thing and we've always got to remember that about faith faith is a reasonable act and it, it it requires something to believe in or an object to believe in um and in this case obviously it's the faith in christ he's saying to them if you put your faith in the right place then you will see even more marvelous things than this happen it's the issue is not do you believe the issue is merely the issue is do you believe in the right thing? Uh, because we can have a lot of faith. We can have very sincere, deep faith in something that cannot produce what we actually believe. And that is not going to get us anywhere. If, if we 
believe uh, in the law, if the disciples carried on believing in the law and looking to the law for their life and for fruitfulness, that faith, as deep as it can be, and their faith was deep in the law, as, as established as it can be, as sincere as it can be, will not produce fruit. It can't because it's the it's maybe deep faith, but it is in the wrong thing. But even if you have little faith, faith like a mustard seed in the right thing, you can see miraculous things happen. So Jesus is saying to them, if you have sincere, deep belief in the law, it'll get you nowhere. But if you have a little faith, if you have some faith in the right, which is Christ and the new covenant that is to be established, then you will see amazing things happen. You will see life and fruitfulness unfold in new ways. You will see new bountifulness in your fruitfulness because your faith is in the right thing. And, and that's what I want to encourage us today is to have faith in Christ. It is only in Christ that we can have the fruitfulness of the kingdom manifest in our lives and become the people that God has intended and purposed for us to be. It can only happen because we believe in Christ. If we believe in anything else, it's it, no matter how sincere and how deep our faith is, it's not going to get us there. Um, it's only faith in Christ. And so can I pray for us today that um, as we build up to Good Friday, that they would be even in our uh, establishing in our faith in Jesus and that we, our fruitfulness will continue to grow and go to the next level in the kingdom. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you recognize that which failed and that which could no longer sustain us as human beings and bring us into that place of your purposes and of living the lives that you wanted us to live. And thank you, Lord, that you put that aside that you did curse the fig tree, that you did say you will never again produce fruit so that we would not be confused and not know where to look. And therefore, Father, we don't put our faith in our own works, in our self-righteousness and in our own abilities, but we put our faith in you, Lord Jesus. And we say it is your work on the cross that saves us and it is your resurrection life that, it, that through the Holy Spirit is empowered in us so that we can live lives of fruitfulness, and we thank you for that. And we put our faith in you, Jesus, and we trust you. And in this time, we renew our sense of trust in you. And we say, Lord, come and have your way with us so that your fruitfulness can be established in us and through us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you in this week. And uh, remember, we're going to be together on Good Friday and have a great time in service and have communion together. And also on Sunday, we're going to have a great uh, time together in our services. So bless you. Look forward to seeing you there. Bye.